ground levels from Russia's nuclear explosions thus far do not warrant undue public concern, U.S. experts report. But they say if fallout increases substantially, it will become far more important as a potential worldwide health hazard. Robert Liss, chief of the Weather Bureau's Atmospheric Radioactivity Project, traces the fallout path following Russia's much-criticized super bomb explosion. The Soviet government recently detonated a large nuclear device at their Arctic proving grounds in Novoya Zemla. Although the largest portion of the debris from this device was injected into the high stratosphere, some part was left behind in the lower atmosphere to contribute to the immediate fallout. This fallout traveled first southward over Russia and then eastward, reaching the east coast of Asia in about three days and passed out over Sakhalin Island and northern Japan. It continued past the Aleutians onto the west coast of North America in about five days and then continued across North America, across the Atlantic, and back to Europe. The large fraction of the debris, which was injected into the stratosphere, is expected to circulate in the high atmosphere for several months and will, be, and will appear in the spring rains of this following spring. It is expected that the deposition will occur in the temperate latitudes of the northern hemisphere with larger amounts in those areas that experience larger rainfall, such as the eastern half of the United States, western Europe, Japan, and the eastern part of Asia. More arid regions will, of course, experience somewhat lesser amounts of fallout. 